There has got to be a better way. Hey everybody, welcome to Ron's Computer Videos. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you decide to make the first video in about three or four months and upgrade the ROM in your Apple IIc. Now you're saying, I've got all these amazing tools to do it. What would be the proper tool for the job? And we'll talk about that, but first let's prep the patient. So with the Apple IIc, your first bet is you're gonna have to uh, go ahead and remove the keyboard. So that way you can actually gain access to the system board. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Hey, this is one of the really nice ones. Ooh la la. Tell you what, former school teachers are the best people to buy your Apple IIs from. So here's what we've got. We've got a later revision Apple IIc uh, that has the memory expansion uh, slot and such. So, uh, you know, it should already have everything that would be required to use with uh, ROM-wise, uh, to use with something like the W drive. But because we can't leave well enough alone, we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the ROM. I purchased this little guy online. This is a, uh, a 4X revision um, Apple IIc ROM. Uh, there's a bunch of different places you can get these online, you know the normal places, or uh, if you have a ROM programmer and you've got all the little uh, bits and bobs, I, I mean you can make one yourself, but I like supporting the community, so I figured uh, I would just go ahead and order one online rather than order a programmer and all the other stuff. So it's, uh, it's just my little way of giving back through uh, complete laziness. So how are we going to get this original chip out of there, and I already know you guys have been at this game a long time. You're just gonna reach for your trusty flat blade and you're gonna jam it right underneath there. Give it a little twisty twist and pull that right up out of there. And you know what? That's probably worked really great for you. Right up until the point where you split a socket one time because you weren't paying attention. You put a little bit too much force. You actually maybe got underneath there and jabbed the motherboard a bit. Well, there's better options and they're so cheap. Let's investigate them. I guarantee everybody has one of these little chip pullers uh, in their collection. It's uh, it's really just very simple. You get on either side of the chip, you uh, kind of squeeze in, and then you very slowly sort of give it a little rocking motion and you'll pull that chip up out of there. Um, these uh, solutions are really good and they're really cheap and you can get them basically anywhere. I think I got this one maybe at Harbor Freight, uh, but I mean, you can pick them up on eBay for a dollar shipped uh, from China if you don't mind waiting. Um, these solutions are okay, but there are maybe some better ones uh, that are out there as well um, that, you know, if you catch people uh, snoozing on their eBay auction, you might be able to get a decent price. And this is one such device. This is the um, EX2. Um, I, I've seen these in, uh, like, Adrian Black and different people use it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen Chris use one of these in one of his videos. Uh, but basically, this is just a, uh, a dip extractor, uh, but it's, uh, it's designed in such a way that it takes a lot of the pressure off of the sides of the chip and tries to convert that force into something that uh, will probably protect it. So um, this is a very interesting design. I'm gonna do the extraction with all of the devices at the end of the video. So, I mean, you can look and make your own judgment calls, but uh, this is very pretty. And I think if you buy these brand new, these might be 35 or $40. I got this one at a uh, electronic supply house that was going out of business uh, on eBay. I think I ended up paying like $14 shipped, which still, uh, might be a bit, but I don't know. It's just kind of neat. And for our friends that love those screwdrivers, uh, we can get an actual chip lifter, like the uh, something that is probably uh, designed a little bit better uh, to keep you safer. Um, if you look, when I get this out of here, I, I see Adrian Black and people use these in their videos all the time. It's actually, it's kind of like a flat blade that has a little bit of a uh, verification uh, there in the tip, a little fork in the tip. Uh, and a curve on it, so that way that you're not trying to stab this sideways. You're actually able to better use leverage um, uh, to uh, lever out the chip rather than uh, just kind of like jamming it underneath there and stressing the socket out. So we'll try all of them, and then uh, you guys can decide what you think is best. 
All right, since I talked about it first, I'm gonna go with the old standby and just go ahead and see uh, exactly how difficult it is to uh, go ahead and extract the ROM chip on this Apple IIc. So I'll go ahead and get everything lined up. See if I can get that slid underneath there. And uh, there might be like a tiny bit of a, uh, yeah. And it pulled up out of there. The chip came out just fine. This is the original Apple ROM. Uh, it didn't really bend up the pins or anything like that, but it was not very kind of secure on the side. And you do need to be able to get these thicker sort of um, blades on the end here underneath your chip. So if it's very snug down there in the socket, you, you may potentially be out of luck on this, but um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna reinsert the chip and uh, we'll give it another try with the next device. All right, let's go ahead and give the um, EX2 a shot. Now, when you look at this, the, um, the actual little blades that fit underneath the processor, or I'm sorry, processor, the chip or whatever, the dip you're extracting, um, are very, very thin. And it kind of relies on the motion of this plunger kind of coming up that it secures it around the edge of the chip. It can only go so far because I mean, it's as wide as whatever the chip is. And then it will kind of pull up and it pushes the top of the dip into this cavity right here. So the idea is that it's uh, taking a little bit of stress off of the entire operation. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get it lined up. I'm going to, and this is not an exact science, just because these, um, this dip extractor is kind of for a couple of different models, but okay. So I appear to have it in place and I have it uh, fully sort of gripped and I slipped, look at that. So I guess it also comes down to, you've got to have a good uh, sort of methodology or you've got to have good uh, sort of, um, So it doesn't matter what your solution is. Oh, I guess if you um, take an extra second to make sure that you have both of those little lugs underneath the CP or underneath the chip, uh, they extract pretty easily. So that was nice. It kind of just held it there um, securely inside there. Remember, this is kind of an older one too. It's had a lot of use. So I don't know if the newer ones uh, operate a little more freely, but I can hear some grinding on mine. Might need to hit it with the uh, WD-40. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get our chip lifter out of here. I went ahead and I cut this open a little bit earlier to make this uh, easier because I know how uh, people are so pressed for time these days. I want to make sure that I'm making the most of yours. So, okay, so uh, just like anything else, and I don't want to, I want to make sure, that's probably an easy mistake to make, is that you um, reach underneath the chip and you le lever against something that's nearby and potentially damage it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can get underneath this side of the chip and I'm just going to lever it up just a tiny bit, free up some space. Now I've got a good thing. Make sure I don't bend any pins. I'm going to come to the other side, lever it up over here. I can get the tool out of the way and there's my chip out. That was pretty no stress. Okay, so we're back. Um, at a maybe a better angle to actually see some of these concepts I'm talking about. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, we had like the far away video. Um, I showed you far, now I'm gonna show you near. Oh, so again, we have to make sure that we get those little spades kind of underneath the feet. And I'm gonna do my best not to hit the camera, but this is, uh, this is kind of scary to me uh, using this. This is very tight, tight in here. Okay, I heard it lift up out of there. So, I no bent pins or anything, but um, again, these are very, very thick. So you're, um, whatever you're extracting is going to need to not be 100% down in there. Plus, it did leave some little scrapes there on the side of the uh, ROM chip, so. But, all right, let's give the next one a try. All right, let's go ahead and give the, um, the EX2 a shot. And again, we've got to get this all just kind of lined up just exactly right. And we put a little bit of pressure there on the side. Rock it back and forth. Sure enough, came right up out of there. I really like this guy. I think that this is kind of very a safe way to kind of do some of these uh, chip extractions. 
Um, I guess if you were really, really concerned, you could replace some of these with Ziffs, but uh, I don't know, it seems expensive and I'm kind of lazy. All right, last person on the uh, show tonight is our, uh, our chip lifter. So let's give it a shot. Remember, you don't want to uh, put a bunch of pressure out there. I mean, it'd be very easy to let lever against that. And it'd be also be very easy to break the socket or uh, mess up the um, the 65 CO2 uh, microprocessor. So let's try not to break things. Okay, a little bit of pressure underneath there. We've extracted this, so this socket is... Uh, had more action than it's ever had, like its entire life. So, so it's probably given it up pretty easy. But no, the chip extractor worked really well. And you see what I'm kind of talking about that you've got that little split in the end and you've got that curve that all kind of uh, uh, gives you maybe uh, better leverage when doing that. I mean, it's literally a like a class one lever or whatever. Okay. So we've extracted uh, enough uh, chips tonight. Let's go ahead and let's install our uh, ROM 4X chip. Um, always wanna make sure, and I, I mean, when this one arrived, it's all the pins are in nice and straight position. Um, I, I see a lot of people, they'll take them and they'll lay them on a table. They give them just a tiny bit of a inward uh, sort of um, curve so that way that uh, when you pl when you try to actually put it in the uh, socket that you don't have one pin go sprawling in out the side and then you've potentially got a major problem on your hands. So um, these appear to have a little bit of inward bias at least on one side so that probably works for me so I'm gonna go ahead and line it up with the socket and we're gonna make sure that that all all of our pins are in there. I'm gonna look down the side, everything looks good, everything looks good. All right, and then we're going to just put even pressure. Okay, and we are reinserted, and that looks good. Okay, we're back to position one. We've got a replacement ROM chip in there. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and button up the machine and go ahead and power it on and make sure everything works. Of course, always make sure that before you power anything up, you double check your chip orientation. Um, the silk screen on this board does have a little uh, notch uh, silk screened on to show you where the notch on your chip goes. Just make sure you always do those type of uh, those checks before you actually do let the magic smoke out. So anyway, hey, thanks for joining me this evening. I, I, I really appreciate you guys coming and giving me feedback and stuff on the videos. Um, I've had a really good time uh, making these and I, I hope to make a couple of more. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas, some TGS video stuff, uh, additional video stuff. I've also got some ideas for like weird um, ADB sort of input devices, uh, but I'm, I'm kind of working on those and I'm waiting for a couple of items to come in the mail. So anyway, hey, Hey, thanks everybody for joining me and Apple II forever.